Hello, St. Paul's. Today we are looking at Mark 14, verses 43 to 65, as we look at the good news about Jesus. This is the story of Jesus' arrest and is being questioned by the Sanhedrin. Jesus got his disciples up and said the hour had come, and a mob approached. And from that mob came Judas, the one who had agreed to betray Jesus. And he came to Jesus and kissed him as a student would kiss a master, a teacher in those days by way of greeting. But this was no greeting. This was a signal to the others that this one was Jesus. Remember, there were no cameras, there was no evening news or newspaper. So you would only know somebody's image if you saw them. And usually if you saw them several times, and this mob probably hadn't seen Jesus, didn't know him, but Judas pointed him out. One of Jesus' followers, John's Gospel tells us that it was Peter, swung a sword and cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, who was probably leading the mob. Jesus was arrested. There are a strange couple of verses in verse 51 and 52 about a young man who was grabbed and he fled as those who grabbed him held on to his linen robe and left the robe behind and ran off. Most biblical scholars agree that this was Mark saying, I was there. This young man was Mark himself. I was there. I saw this happen. I was an eyewitness. Jesus was then taken to the Sanhedrin, the religious authority in Jerusalem, to be questioned. And it was a mockery of a trial. The Sanhedrin brought in witness after witness after witness to give testimony to things that Jesus was supposed to have done or said. And the problem was they couldn't keep their story straight. They were all giving false testimony and they were all contradicting each other. So it left them no further ahead with Jesus having really no accuser at all. And finally, the high priest said, are you the Messiah? Are you the son of the blessed one? To which Jesus responded, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the mighty one coming on the clouds of heaven. Now you have to remember that throughout Mark's gospel, there had been the messianic secret. Jesus was keeping secret who he really was. He revealed it to his disciples and those closest to him, but to everyone else, it was a secret. But now the secret was over, and Jesus revealed who he really was, who he really is, God's Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One, the Son of God. Well, the Sanhedrin flipped out with this because they saw blasphemy. They, they believed this to be an insult to God. And they convicted him, sentencing him to death. They had him beaten and they spit on him. Anything and everything they could do to insult him, they did. And this was the moment at which Jesus revealed his glory. He revealed who he really was. And the reaction of the Sanhedrin was to strike out at him. But what of our reaction? What of our reaction when Jesus reveals his glory, that Jesus is God's Messiah, that he is the Son of God, that he is God, that he is the Savior of the world, and in him and only in him can we know forgiveness and salvation? What is our reaction to that truth? Well, some ignore it. Some turn their back on it. Some say, yeah, but it doesn't matter. But all of those lose the point that the glory of Jesus revealed who he really was, who he really is. And the only appropriate response to Jesus' glory being revealed is to believe in him. When Jesus reveals his glory, we need to believe in him, in who he is, who he has claimed to be, that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. He is the second person in the Holy Trinity. He is God. He is our Savior. When Jesus reveals his glory, we also need to trust him. We need to trust him to forgive our sins. We need to trust him for our salvation. We need to trust him to be with us in all ways and in all things. When Jesus reveals his glory, we also need to follow him. He is the master. He is the Lord. We are the students. We are the followers. And so we are to follow where he leads us. 
We are to go where he calls us to go. When Jesus reveals his glory, we are to serve him. He is the Lord, and we offer our service to the Lord so that all of our words and all of our actions would give honor to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Our loving God, we thank you for these stories in which we see Jesus' glory being revealed and we see the reaction of the religious leaders. Lord, help us always to have a good and holy response to Jesus, that we would believe in him, that we would trust him for our lives, that we would follow where he leads, and that we would serve him in all ways. Our God, all this we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you.